All right, we have this paragraph here at the beginning. Um, what we're really focusing on here is what we're going to call zero pairs. Right there, right? Um, some people call it the additive inverse property, and that is a, a nice property uh, because it's how we're going to balance equations and stuff. But for the most part, we're just going to be looking at these zero pairs for now, and then we'll talk about how it relates to this additive inverse thing. So, for example, this hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. Uh, protons, by the way, are positive, and uh, electrons are negative. So what happens when we combine a positive and a negative? We get, like if we add these two together, we'd get zero, because they cancel each other out, right? Um, that kind of makes sense right there. Or, for example, let's look at this next one. Let's say that you take four steps forwards, one, two, three, four, and then you take three steps backwards, one, two, three. Where are you in relation to where you started? Yeah, it's like you're one step forward in relation to where you were started. So, in this, we, we may look at this zero pair stuff. How many footsteps were canceled out? Yeah, three, right? This one, this one, and this one. Three. So we call those three zero pairs. What's the value of those that we've canceled out? Zero, right? So what about this next example? Let's say you get a check in the mail for a million bucks, right? And then in that same mail, you got a bill for a million bucks. Well, how many zero pairs are there? Some people would say one, some would say a million. Both are correct. It all depends on how you look at it. Does that make sense there? So this check is canceled out by this check. Lisa earned eight bucks, then spent six bucks. How many zero pairs would be in this thing? Let's draw a diagram and find out, okay? So let's, let's say she earned eight bucks, right? So let's say that these are dollar coins, silver dollars, whatever they call them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight silver dollars, right? And then these ones right account will be ones that she spent one, two, well, let's actually do this. She spent six of these, right? So she got rid of this one, two, three, four, five, six. So how many zero pairs are there? Six. Yeah, six zero pairs. And what's the overall value of this after she spent the six bucks? Two. She's got two dollars left. And that would be the value of this. John took 15 bucks out of his bank account, then deposited 10 bucks. How many zero pairs? Ten. Ten. Very good. So if he took 15 bucks out of his bank account, then deposited 10, what's the overall result of this? Yes. Yeah, right? He's got $5 in his pocket. Or another way to look at this one is that he's got $5 less in his bank account. Right? Because he took out more than he put in. All right, number four here. I ate one candy bar with 200 calories, and I ate four apples with 50 calories each. So let's look at a diagram for this one. All right. So let's first draw in this candy bar. I'll say it's this one. And how many calories does it have? 200 calories, right? But then in addition to that, you eat one apple. I don't know, apples just look like hearts to me. There's one. There's four of these things, right? One, two, three, four. There we go. Those are good apples. Um, well, how many calories are in each apple? 50, right? So there's 50 here, 50 here, 50, and then another 50. So this is a nice diagram of it. Is there any zero pairs on this one? No, because you're just continually consuming calories. And what's the net result on this? Yeah, I've got to add all these together. So how many calories total did were consumed here? 400, bam. 400, well, I'll just write calories because calories is a long word. So there are these things called tiles that we use sometimes to 
So as a diagram for these types of problems, especially to represent integers. All right, now some of you guys with the printout, sometimes it doesn't come out very clearly, but shaded boxes like this one have a value of negative one. Uh, but if it's just open like this one where it's white, then it is a positive one. Now notice positive one does not have the positive in front of it, but you can put it there if you want. All right, this is number 12 on the worksheet. So right here, it says, what does this model represent? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, okay? Well, I, I, we can do that. So I'm going to put a plus in the positive ones just so we can tell the difference. So I've got these three positive ones because they are white. And then these gray ones are negatives. So what does this model really represent? It has, we have three positive ones. And then we're going to add to this two negative ones. You see that? So when we look at this, how many zero pairs do we got? Well, we've got these two. That positive and negative will cancel out. And then this positive and negative will also cancel out. That's two zero pairs. All right. So in the end, after those are canceled out, we've just got this last one left. So it really just represents a positive one. And I guess that would be the argument. So this is number 14 on the worksheet. What does this model represent? So let's go ahead and uh, tag on our signs for these. This one's a positive. And we've got one, two, three, four, five negatives. So really, we've got one, and then we'll add on these five negatives, like this. So what do we end up with? Well, we've got this zero pair right here. That's one zero pair. And what do we have over here? Well, looks like we've got four negative ones, meaning that this all will equal a negative four. <coughs> Let's go to number 16. Represent negative five with chips or tiles. Draw your representation in the space below. So this one is representing negative five. So let's draw five negative tiles. So it may be difficult to shade these in. So again, I'm just going to indicate that they are negative with a negative sign in each tile, like this one. So this would be a nice representation, but notice it has the second part. Can you represent negative 5 in any other way? Well, certainly we can, right? Mm -hmm. What do we need to add to this in order to still have a representation of negative 5? Yes? I'm sorry? Yeah, very good. What happens when we put, put in there a negative and positive? What do we call that? It's a zero pair. Very good. So let's go ahead and draw that in. So we got our five negatives, which we always had. One, two, three, four, five. But then, like you said, we can put in another negative with another positive, and then these two will cancel out. Um. Now, could we add another zero pair to this thing? <coughs> Would it change the value of it if we add a zero pair? No, it wouldn't, right? Also, it doesn't matter where that we put them. I mean, I put those kind of next to each other. Well, let's put a negative here and then a positive here. It's not going to change anything. They'll still cancel out, okay? And the overall... The overall value of this thing is still negative 5. It says represent 5 plus 6 with chips or tiles. Okay. So how would we represent 5 plus 6? Yes? Very good. Yep, that's it. So let's take 5 positive tiles. And then we're going to add 6 tiles to this, right? So just to separate these, I'm going to put them more down here. And there we go. So if we counted all these together, how many, what's the value of 5 plus 6? 11. 11, right. So in this, we're going to write 11. And uh, that would be the value of this thing, so... The explanation, of course, we could say that we just have 11 positive tiles. Uh, there are no zero pairs in this, by the way. Represent 8 plus negative 6 with chips or tiles. 
All right, 8 plus negative 6, so we need 8 positive tiles. That's what we'll start with. There we go, 8 positive tiles. And then we need 6 negative tiles, so here we go. Just like that. Now I am lining these up on purpose, by the way, so that I can see how many zero pairs I will have. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zero pairs. And the sum of this thing then becomes 2. All right, six zero pairs, and we have two positive tiles left. Therefore, the value of this, or sum, is two. For this part of the lesson, we're going to be using a number line instead of tiles. So this will just give you guys another option in terms of what you may use in order to solve these types of problems. Let's look at number one. An osprey flies off the ground and reaches 35 feet above a river when he sees a trout. So, and I think I want a picture of this thing. Yeah, let's use some pictures for this. I'm not going to worry about the words, but then we'll, we'll solve it just using the picture. So, uh, it's 35 feet above the river when it sees a trout. So, uh, off the ground and reaches, yeah, 35 feet above the river. So, let's say that this is the river right here. This is the river height. And then this osprey is just a bird. It's flying 35 feet above the river, right? And you can draw a bird if you want. I don't know how to draw a bird. There's a bird. Maybe more of a bat. Whatever. All right. Well, it's going to dive. So this thing is going to go down 37 feet. So it's going to go beyond below the river. Does, does that make sense why it has to go below the river? Because it is catching a trout, which is a type of fish, all right, just in case we didn't know that. So it's going to go down 37 feet where it will find the fish. There's our fish. Good fish. Okay, so how many feet below the water does he end up? Well, that's very good, yep. Since we've got to cover these 35 feet right here, there's two more feet that it's got to go down below the water. Which seems kind of deep for a bird, but, uh, you know, when you're hungry, you do what you got to do. So how many feet below the water does it end up? Two feet. You walk three miles from your house to the store. So let's, let's just draw that in first. So let's put in a house. I'm just going to make it a circle because I'm too lazy to draw a house. And this is your house. And you're going you're gonna to walk to the store three miles. So let's make this three miles right here. And this is the store. It's bigger than your house. We'll make it a box. It's nice. This right here is the store. Now from your house to the store, bam, three miles. And since we're looking at a number line here, let's just draw in markers for this. We'll say that each of these, this is one mile, this is two miles, and then this is three miles, right? Well, then it says that you walk one mile back towards your house. So let's go from the store then, and we're going to walk one mile back towards the house this way. <coughs> and so how far away are you from your house now? We can see that it's going to cover this two miles right here. So the answer is two miles. All right, number five here. We're going to put all these on this number line. Uh, but first, I want you guys to know that in this class, I don't care what type of number line you use. Just notice that this one here for number five is horizontal. And then the num one for number six there is vertical. You get to choose which one you like the best, okay? All right, so let's put in A first. A here is 4. So there's my 0 value, and I can see 4 is right here. And I'm going to label it 4 so I know it's there. And above I can put A. So this A is checked out. Okay. B, so if this is where 0 is, and this is a negative 4, B is. Negatives are to the left of 0 on number lines. If you ever put it to the right, just know that, I mean, you may understand it, but it's not the way that we do it in the class. So unfortunately, this is one of those things that we have to do in a very specific way. 
Now it's negative 4, so we're just going to go 4 units to the left of 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that value is negative 4, and that is where B is. I'll put a point there. All right, so I can check this one off. What about negative 15? That's C. Well, it shows us negative 15 in this number right here. So I'm going to put a C there and a point. C is checked off. What about D? D is 7. So I can see this is 5. If I go 2 more, I am at 7. And that is where D is. Put a nice point there. All right, then let's go ahead and put E. That's at 18, which means I'm going to have to slide mine over to the right a little bit. 18 is to the right of 15, 16, 17, 18, right of here. There is E. Let me check off E. Nine, uh, F is negative 19. And we can see 19 is farther to the left than negative 15, or it's 1 to the right from negative 20. That's negative 19. And that would then be F. Okay, so as we go farther to the left on a number line, the bigger the negative values will get. And uh, the farther to the right we go, the smaller the negatives will get until we get to the positives, and then they will get bigger. All right, let's do a couple on this vertical number line, then we'll call it good. So C there is 7. Let's, let's first identify where 0 is. Uh, well, C is in the positive. Positives are always going to be up, and then the negatives are down below the 0, uh, which is why we like this. This kind of works like a thermometer, one of those old-fashioned ones. So oh, yeah. if we go up 2 from 5, that is where 7 is, and that is the value C. This one's checked off. Uh, let's look at one of these negative values. Let's look at B. That's negative 17. There's negative 15, negative 16, negative 17. Right here. And that is B, negative 17. 